Are you a high-level athlete not seeing the best results? You're going to want to listen to this. Our next caller is Mac from Indiana. Mac, what's happening? Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Uh, so I had some – I was looking for some advice on how to combat the feeling of not doing enough in the gym. Okay. Uh, so f- some context. I uh, just started MAPS Aesthetic and – or not just started. Getting through uh, phase two here. And on these focus sessions days on my smaller muscle groups like triceps and traps, I feel like I'm just not doing enough during my time in the gym. So tell me, tell me, Mac, a little bit about your athletic background that I know you have. Uh, yeah, so I was a D1 swimmer yeah. in college, uh, just recently graduated in May. So I'm very much accustomed to the 20 hours of 20 hours a week of working out. It's like six days a week, two hours of practice. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I've trained. So it's, it's, I've trained a couple highly competitive swimmers. I had no when I first started training one years ago. I had no idea the amount of frequency and volume of training at that level. It was twice a day. Pra- right, you did like twice a day for first hours thing in the morning. Yeah, I mean it'd be yeah it'd be a double probably twice maybe three times a week. I mean just. A lot of a lot of volume. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So let's so let's unpack this for a second. Okay. What do you mean when you say that you feel like you're not doing enough, or let's say you feel unsatisfied? Like, what do you what do you mean by that exactly? Uh, like if I like if it's if I'm doing triceps, it just feels like only doing three exercises of three sets just isn't enough i guess on uh, like i just don't feel uh like i've i've done anything what what does enough feel like to you a uh, little bit sore uh maybe not not like too sore but you know uh i guess just um satisfied with it i get like i feel like i've i've done a good work and i've i've put the work in I know, I guess, but, but like with, but what does that feel like? So yeah. we, this is important that we, I know we, it's South figure, fishing for right now. Well, I'm not even <laughs> fishing. I just want to know what you mean because <laughs> oh, you're fishing. Yeah. Yes, because I want to know what it feels like to you. And and maybe you don't even, maybe you haven't even put words to this, but this is really important uh, to break down because there's an upper limit to how much exercise your body can tolerate. And then there's the best amount that's going to get you the best results. And they're not the same. So there's a there's a, a volume and intensity and a frequency that's going to give you the best results. And then up above and beyond that is what you can tolerate. And you get diminishing returns, but you can tolerate it. You can get away with it. And so I need to know what feeling you're looking for because if it's, you know, and this is important because if you feel like, you know, I just, I feel like I can do more. Well, that just means that you're used to training your upper limit of tolerance, not optimal, not optimum for results. Nothing necessarily wrong with that if you're willing to trade results and progress for that feeling. Well, so, also keep in mind too, when you're when you're a competitive swimmer, you're trying to get great at this sport, right? Like you're not trying to build the most muscle or burn the most body fat. So if you're approaching weight training with that same idea, well, yeah, we could totally scale up the volume of, of how much exercise you're doing if you just want to get better at exercising. But I'm assuming that you have goals like I want to build some muscle, I want to be stronger, I want to lose body fat. Like, if you have goals like that, it's uh, there's a much more scientific approach to how you do that and what's optimal for your body to see the most amount of results versus how much can I actually do in a workout that I'll actually be able to tolerate. Like Sal saying, those are different things. And when I train comp- highly competitive people, it's really hard for them to make that switch totally. because that's how they have approached training for their sport for so many years and probably had success if you made it to D1. So you're, you've learned to do that and push yourself to that level. But when you're actually training to build muscle or to build strength or to lose body fat, it's a it's a total different approach than just how much can I can I do now? Where's where's your intensity gauge through these sets? Like, are you placing more demand on the load, and and after you're done, you feel unsat like it feels hard on your way through, but you just feel unsatisfied because you don't have that sore feeling after you get through your sets. Yeah, um, I'm more putting more emphasis on the total reps, so I'm trying to hit that 20 rep range on the, on these focus sessions. You you know, Um, you know what, Mac, um, 
sorry to interrupt. Okay, so here's one of the challenges. I'm going to I'm going to go through this because this might be something that you're thinking. If not, definitely people watching in the same position as you are are, are thinking this. You competed at a very high level and you trained at it with an extreme volume. And so the argument tends to come back and say, "Well, if it doesn't work, then why was I training so much and competing at such a high level?" Well, here's why. Okay, here's why swimmers and divers and gymnasts in particular train so much. Now, you don't see football players doing that kind of volume of training. It's different. But mm -hmm. you see highly skilled sports do incredible amounts of volume and frequency. And here's why. Let me ask you a question, Mac. You, are, you're, you obviously know how to swim very yeah. well. How much of a difference does, per, does perfect technique make in your speed when you're swimming? I, it, everything. That's everything, I mean, right? It's... Like you could have somebody who's less perfect but way more powerful, and they'll get creamed by the guy next to him who's got the most perfect technique with their swim, right? Uh, yeah. This is true for diving and gymnastics as well. Now, that volume and frequency and training, the reason why they're training you to the point that you can maximally tolerate is because what they're really looking for is perfection in technique and execution. And the more you practice, the better your execution gets. Even if you sacrifice a little bit of strength and recovery and stamina, that's worth it because it's all about skill and technique. Now, when you're working out, Adam said something great. You want to be the best at working out. Well, then just go ahead and do as much as you could possibly tolerate. But if you're looking for strength, aesthetics, mobility, muscle building, fat loss, you're going to have to change your mentality. It is not the same mental state as mm -hmm. the D1 competitive swimmer that you were before. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and help you here because it's hard to get out of that. So here's some advice. Yeah. When you're in there doing your focus sessions, do your focus session. When you're done with it, do something else. You don't have to leave the gym. Why not do more mobility work or technique work or skill work or stretching or other types of activity that can help facilitate recovery, can improve maybe your skill or work on mobility. But what I don't want you to do is keep lifting weights because it's just going to take away. Again, unless you don't care about the results as much, then I'd say go and push yourself until you hit that limit. But if you really care about results, don't do more, but you can do other things that can help out. And, that and to be honest, Mac, and I don't know if you started here, but already like what we've learned about you already and if you were an actual client I would actually make your ass do map, maps and a ball yeah. which would really fucking drive you crazy yeah, this, is, this, is, <laughs> yeah, this is where I would have gone like, yeah. yeah more of the one to five rep range uh, to really shake it up because this is a completely different pursuit and you have to kind of I mean this is this is a very challenging mental uh, task in front of you is to really kind of shift that attention into what builds you the most strength and not necessarily what you're using used to in terms of the feel of this physical activity yeah and, and you know what's funny the irony mac yeah. is that maps aesthetic is one of our higher volume programs <laughs> yeah that's why i said <laughs> exactly that's, yeah, that's, that's 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 why i picked it i was like oh yeah this is exactly. Exactly. i know i know that's, and that's like nothing it. for you so yeah. it's like you gotta yeah. do something different yeah, yeah i know that's why you pick are you in our private forum no i'm not okay but. you're gonna need coaching yeah this is not the, but okay the hardest people i ever trained were people like you. So, yeah. and it's hard because it's, you have that mentality. It's there. It was really effective for you. It's going to be really hard to get out of that. So I'm going to bring you in our, our private form, give us updates, tag us and give us updates so that we can keep talking sense into you. Cause you're going to keep veering into this lane. It's just going to keep happening. I promise you. Yeah. I would love to yeah, see you. Absolutely. I would love to see you. Why don't we give him maps and a ball too? Because I'd actually like to see him do maps and a ball, like, as much as it'll drive him crazy. And the thing that I, if you were my client, that might be too much of a jump. That's dude. all right. Though. If and if you were a client of mine and I was talking to you every day, I would actually be making good medicine. Dude. I'd want you to do long rest periods and we would just like, I'd make you sit down and yeah. you'd be chalking up and we'd be talking about the squad. And like, oh yeah, that looked really good last time. Now next time. And like really analyze Analyzing your he's movement just be and technique, he's so antsy. Yeah, and ah. and and making you sit and rest for those full he, three he, minutes. He'd and then, fire you and hire the CrossFit coach over there <laughs> yeah. and all the, all the circuits and shit. But I, but I would, I would, I would, I would make you do that, and then and and let's just let's just focus on getting stronger and stronger and giving yeah. yourself these these long adequate rests. And it would, I know it would drive you crazy, but I know it's what's best for you. And that if I could get you to commit for a couple months of trusting me. Um, I think that once you saw the strength gains and the muscle that would start to come on your body, yeah. I think that I, I could get you bought in. But it's it's breaking that 
uh, those old behaviors uh, that made you such a great swimmer. It's it's you don't want to be just great at working out. I think you want to probably build muscle or get stronger. Those things are probably where you're. I'm assuming, right? I mean, I guess we should clarify. Yeah. That. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mac, yeah. Mac what yeah. when you were competitive? So were you were you more of a sprinter, uh, medium distance or long nah, distance? No, I was the distance kid. You were the distance <laughs> yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, was, nonetheless, yeah, so nonetheless, I'm going to say this: uh, if you got to D1 for any sport. You've got better genetics than 99% of anybody watching this. If you do everything right with what we're saying, you're going to get amazing results. So if your results are lackluster, you're probably overdoing it. That's what I'm going to guess. You're probably overdoing it. And I so. would say, and I would say um, what I would get my my competitive athletes to do is to just is uh, let's channel that that crazy discipline that you have mm -hmm. and attention to detail to other things like the the diet. Like let's let's get like really crazy about really tracking the food and paying attention to how your body and strength is changing and like shift that and mobility like get really good at mobility moves maybe take something from like our our uh, maps performance program and like practice mobility moves and get mm -hmm. really good at that like find air, other areas that um, you can get hyper focused on and and take that competitive uh, mind of yours and channel it where it's mm -hmm. going to benefit you channeling that that into more volume and intensity. And training is only going to hinder you, so that you've got to shift away from and find something else to, to focus it on. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you in the forum, Mac. Gotcha. Right on, man. All right. Awesome. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yep. And in, in another life, uh, Adam was a D one swimmer. Yeah. Remember that time we went to the pool and yeah. he, just, yeah. he did really well <laughs> against it out. All of a sudden. I, you know, it's I, I, I'm telling the truth now. I, there's obviously general categories of clients that we've worked with. The most challenging were these. Especially when they were only like five to ten years out, highly competitive college athletes. For sure, because it was they're successful. It was so hard to get them to pull back. It was it was easier to get the couch potato to start moving than it was to get that person to pull back because they're in it. They have another gear. Yeah. They're very comfortable in that gear. Yeah, it brought them success. And I like to explain the whole thing about skill and technique because certain sports, the goal is is to push you to your absolute limits because it's about practicing this like you look at a diver they're going to practice as much as their bodies can handle because every little you know if you're off just a little bit you're you're not going to be as good it's not about getting a stronger you know yeah. improving they're, they're refining they're sharpening you know that's definitely part of the process practicing these moves and really getting really good at it and so that's the difference right is to be really good at all these exercises but like if you want to make a substantial change you have to really do something different than you've been doing the whole time yeah totally look if you like uh mind pump you'll love mindpumpfree.com head over there and check out all of our free guides we have guides that can help you with all of your fitness goals you can also find the three of us on instagram so justin is at mind pump justin i'm at mind pump sal and adam is at mind pump adam hey if you enjoyed that clip you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe